When I was about 14 or 15 years old, I went to a friend's party at their house. It was in the UK. That year was really great for me. I didn't have any big worries, no work to do in the mornings, and my mum cooked dinner for me. I had nice, clean bed sheets that I didn't have to clean or change. Then life really got tough, but there's this one thing that really got to me. Once I went to that party I talked about earlier at my friend place. She invited about 50 people. Most of them, like 90%, were from our school, but around 10% weren't. But there were some older guys there. At first it felt weird because I didn't know them. You know, being 14 and a girl, I was cautious. Some of those guys seemed older than 16, maybe even 18. I mostly hung out with my school friends, the ones I knew and trusted. My main friend who threw the party was super busy talking to everyone and getting things sorted. Anyway, the evening was great. Good food, good drinks, and awesome music. But then came the tricky part. I had to figure out how to get home because my mom didn't even know I was there. And obviously I couldn't drive at 14. You might be wondering how my mom didn't know I was at the party. Well, she was on vacation and I was home alone. Well, except for my older brother. He just stayed glued to his computer all day, so he didn't care if I was there or not. And it would probably take him two months to even realize I was gone. So I was at the party, but I needed to get home. One of my friend's moms had given me a ride here. Then I thought it was only about 10 minutes away, so I'd just walk back once the party ended. My friend decided to end the party around 1 a.m. because her mom started getting upset, even though her mom didn't really care about what anyone was doing. She said she needed to sleep because she had work the next day. So, after all that, I left. I didn't ask for a ride from anyone because I didn't want to bother them, and hardly anyone there drove anyway. There were only two guys who drove, so they must have been at least 17 which made me think they were definitely older than us. I started walking home. It was dark and some streetlights were out. As I walked, I noticed car lights behind me. The car wasn't going at a normal speed like the others that had passed me. It was going really slow. Finally, the car stops completely and the guy rolls down the window. I recognize him from the party. He told me if I need a ride. But man, I get the creepiest feeling from him. I decide to say no and keep walking, but he's persistent. He drives alongside me at my walking speed, with the window still down. He kept saying things like, You shouldn't be out here at this time of night. It's too late. Come on, it's getting cold. Let me give you a ride back. The more he insisted, the more suspicious he seemed to me. It raised more and more red flags, and I was just about ready to run. He suddenly stops the car. This totally caught me off guard, because he'd been driving alongside me for the past five minutes, urging me to get in the car. I turned to face him, not sure what to do. I knew I couldn't run from him. He was much bigger and faster than me, and I was wearing shoes with about three inch heels, so I wouldn't stand a chance. I realize that if something bad is going to happen, the only thing I can do is scream for help. So that's what I did. I just screamed as loud as I could, like I'd gone completely crazy. Eventually, almost everyone on the street had heard me, and several neighbors opened their windows, and the guy just stood there, his car still running. I think he noticed that everyone was watching. He looked up at all the windows with people and lights on. Two of them had their windows open and were just looking out. They didn't say anything. I think they were just curious. Once he saw them, he turned around, got back in his car, and then quickly drove away. Some of my friends say he's a nice guy, but 
He didn't go to our school. He actually went to college. But I didn't know him, and I didn't want to get in his car, no matter what. In 2012, during the winter, I found myself staying late at the library. The sun had already set, leaving the surroundings dark. It was evening, and the usual buzz of my friends studying alongside me was absent. I couldn't recall the reason why they did not came. As I gathered my belongings, the library announced it was closing in five minutes. I was totally focused on studying because I had a test in just three days. I gathered my books and packed them into my backpack. Then, I slung it over my shoulder and headed towards the library exit. It was so quiet that it felt like the silence was loud. Libraries are always quiet, but it felt like I was the only one there, besides the lady who worked there. When I stepped outside, I felt how freezing it was. The temperature dropped a lot, and when I looked around, there wasn't anyone else on the campus at all. I walked all the way back to where I lived. But before I reached home, something really scary happened. About halfway there, I had to cross a big road. The campus is divided into two parts, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they designed it like that but there's a highway running through the campus. Crossing it during the day was no big deal, but at night, it was definitely more challenging. To get across, there's this big flight of steps that goes over the highway. Some people call it a flyover. It's like a bridge where you walk on top to cross over. It's pretty cool, and when I visited Europe and the UK, I saw a lot more of them there. They're quite common in those places, but not so much where I live, or at least not in the state I'm from. I reached the steps and started climbing, making sure to watch my step. It was only the beginning of winter, right after fall, so there wasn't much snow yet, but it was really cold, with frosty temperatures. I was bundled up in warm clothes, wearing a beanie hat and a scarf, but I was still freezing. The worst part was my nose. It felt so numb and tingly. I climbed up the first set of steps, and now I had to walk across the highway on the platform. So that's what I did. As I reached halfway across, I noticed a few cars passing by. The traffic had quieted down by then, I guess because rush hour was over. Most folks had already made it home from work, maybe around seven. There were a few cars passing by, but nothing unusual. That is, until I reached the end of the platform. I was about to go down the second set of steps to get back on the other side of the highway. I saw something really weird. The speed limit on the highway was like 80, maybe even faster. I'm not a driver, so don't quote me on that, but all the cars were going fast. Then, there was this one van. It looked like the kind of van you'd imagine some creepy person driving, trying to snatch people up. I couldn't believe it. They weren't driving at the speed limit, or even close to it. They were going really slow, like a snail's pace. I thought maybe they were lost, but how do you get lost on a highway? I was getting closer to them because they were going so slow. It seemed like their van might stop right where the stairs met the ground. As I went down the stairs, I was really nervous, trying to be quiet and still avoiding the eyes. But now, I was even more scared and unsure about what was happening with the people in that van. I was about halfway down the stairs, when I noticed the van had stopped right at the bottom step. Getting closer, I could see two men sitting inside, completely concealing their faces in the darkness. I could see their mouths and tell they were guys by their jawlines. I slowed down, pretending to be cautious of the ice while I thought about what to do next. Something felt off, 
so I didn't want to go all the way down the stairs. If their van had broken down, they'd get out and put their hazard lights on. But they weren't doing any of that. They just sat there. As I got closer, they were watching me, following my every move. That was it. I turned around and started running back up the steps toward my campus. But somehow I slipped on the ice and tumbled down, landing hard on my forearms. I used them to catch myself, and it hurt a lot. The concrete steps felt like they broke my bones. I got up, but my arms felt really sore, like they were shattered. But I didn't care about that right then. I started sprinting back across the platform. I thought I heard the van door open and close, and it made me run even faster. I was breathing hard, panicking more with each step. When I reached the other staircase to go back down, I didn't even think about the ice. I just kept running, skipping steps, and almost fell again. But I made it down to the first step without slipping. I didn't dare to look back as I was too scared of them. In my head, I felt like they were right behind me, like they were chasing me. I made it back to the university campus and dashed into the library. Luckily, the worker hadn't closed the entrance doors or locked up yet. So I ran up the library stairs and straight into a room. I found an employee and told them everything that had just happened to me. The security team arrived within two minutes, followed by the police and then the medics. It turned out I had fractured both bones in each of my arms. The police checked the CCTV footage from the highway and confirmed that the men did stop by the road. They even caught me slipping and falling on camera. Some of the streetlights had cameras attached to them. This meant they could track the men's movements, but they had invalid license plates, so they couldn't be traced after that. Their identity stayed unknown, and now I never walk home at night, especially when it's dark. I take the metro to work and back home every night. It takes about 30 minutes to get to work on the bus, but the metro station is only a five minute walk from my apartment. One night, my boyfriend was at my apartment hanging out with me before I had to go to work. We were talking so much that we didn't realize how late it was. And when I look at the time, I realize I had to hurry to catch the bus. It was one of those snowy nights when everything gets covered in white. If I waited for my boyfriend to warm up the car and clear off the snow, I would have been even later. So I decided to walk to the metro station instead. I gave him a goodbye, then he went to his car, and I start walking. Most of the place I walk through has good lights, but there's one corner that's very dark at night. It's across from the metro station. Even though I live in a tough neighborhood, nothing bad has happened to me before, so I felt okay walking alone at night. I was just thinking about getting to the station. When I got near the dark corner across from where I was going, someone suddenly grabbed my arm. I didn't see him coming at all. The guy who looked like he was in his 40s tried to grab my other arm too, but I quickly elbowed him in the stomach. It was just luck that I reacted quickly, and the man let go of me for a moment. I used that chance to run as fast as I could away from him. When I reached the metro station, I glanced back and saw him still following me. Once inside, I dashed through the station and left from a different door on the other side of the building. I kept running until I reached my apartment safely. Thankfully, my boyfriend was still in the parking lot waiting for his car to warm up. I got into his car and told him what had happened. We called the police, and I gave them a description of the man as best as I could. That night, my boyfriend drove me to work, but I usually take the metro when I work nights. I never got any news from the police, so I guess they didn't find the man. Since then, I started carrying pepper spray whenever I walked to the station. 
I keep it in my hand until I finish walking. I work as a security officer for a company in Southern California. We team up with the sheriff's department to keep the areas we serve safe. My role as a patrol officer is quite similar to that of a police officer. Unlike typical security guards who simply observe and report, we're trained to respond to a variety of situations. From dealing with trespassers and burglaries, to handling domestic disputes. I've chased after people on foot and in vehicles a few times. It's just how we do things. Now that you understand our job, let me share with you an experience I will never forget. Usually I worked the late shift, but because of low manpower, I had to switch to the day shift. I remember driving around the city in my patrol car, listening to our radio for calls. Then, one came in for my district, a burglary alarm on the north side of the city, out in the desert. It must have been around one in the morning when I was sent to check it out. As soon as I turned onto the street for the property, I went dark, which means I turned off all the lights. The building used to be where they packed onions, with big hangers on the west side. But now it's empty, and we're hired to keep an eye on it. I've gone inside many times during my nightly checks, but nothing unusual ever occurred until this particular night. And also, keep in mind, there are no working lights on the property so everything inside was dark. Anyway, I drove to the west side of the property, checking the outside carefully. That's when I noticed a door that was slightly open. I radioed in. This is Lincoln One. I found a door open on the west side of the hangars. Can you send another unit to my location? I'm standing next to my car, having a smoke in the rare drizzle that Southern California gets. I actually enjoy the rain, the wind's pretty strong tonight, too, if I recall correctly. After about five minutes, my buddy and partner shows up. He's actually a really close friend of mine outside of work. We grab our flashlights and head inside. The first thing that hits you when you walk in is the strong smell of onions. I mean, it's so strong that you can practically taste it in your nose. The hangers we're checking are big, dark, and empty with that stinky smell everywhere. And this is where things start to get disturbing. We can hear the light rain tapping on the metal roof. The wind's finding its way through any openings it can. Then, it happens. We hear footsteps on the roof of the hangars. I glance at my partner and say, These hangars don't have a way up to the roof. Then how did they get there? He shrugs and says, Dude, I also have no idea. Lincoln want to control, just to let you know. We're hearing footsteps on the roof. We're on the scene, investigating. We'll update you soon. Dispatch confirms, and we start searching through the building, checking every corner. Then we step outside and check around the building. Just as I suspected, no way up to the roof. Why would anyone be up there in this weather? Anyway, we blame it on the wind. We check everything we can and call it Code 4, meaning all good. As we're walking back through the hangars we just checked, which is the only way out to get back to our vehicles, something really creepy happens. Now, I've never believed in ghosts or anything like that, and I always thought those ghost shows on TV were silly. They always talk about hearing whispers on those shows, but never understanding what's being said. Well, believe it or not, my partner and I heard whispering, like multiple voices all at once. It was crystal clear, but I couldn't make out a single word. My partner and I stopped dead in our tracks and just look at each other, frozen in place. I call in a code six again, and we start searching the property once more. We knew what we heard wasn't normal, but we had to check if someone was possibly still inside that we missed. That's when everything goes crazy. Doors start slamming shut all over the place. My partner and I just look at each other. 
Without saying a word, we walk outside. I can't say we were scared, but we were definitely surprised. I report a secondary code four. I'm outside with my partner, and I glance at him. Let's just say it was the wind, I say. That was the last time I ever went to that place, before I got promoted to corporal and switched to day shifts. I still don't believe in most ghost stories, but I can tell you for sure, it wasn't just the wind that night. When I was 12 years old, I lived in a small town in Washington. I think it was summertime, and I was excited to spend time with my best friend Rose. I told my grandma if I could stay over at Rose's house, and she nodded yes. When I arrived at Rose's place, one of our classmates, a boy whose name I can't quite recall now, also came to her house. He had this new game he was excited for us to try out. He lived two houses down from her. We arrived at his house around 6.30, but honestly, the game he brought wasn't very fun. So I ended up just staring out of his bedroom window. It was really dark outside, and all I could see were our reflections in the window and the glow from the TV. I was sitting right next to the window, and if I leaned a bit, I could see up into the tree branches. So I glanced up and saw two red eyes looking back at me. I got really scared and tried to see what was there, but it was too dark to make out anything else. All I could see were those red eyes. I felt my throat tighten, and I started shaking. I turned to my friends by the TV and whispered, Guys, look up at the tree. Can you see what I see? Rose looked at me, then at the tree, and she froze, looking really scared. Our other friend looked too but then he ran out of the room. We both chased after him because we definitely didn't want to stay alone. He found his dad sitting in the living room watching TV. At first, his dad didn't believe us, but eventually, he got up and looked outside. He saw the eyes too, just staring at us, like they could see right into our hearts. Our friend's dad grabbed his baseball bat and told us to stay inside. He hurried out the back door and closed it tight behind him. But soon after, we heard our friend's dad yelling at whatever was in the backyard. And then, he rushed back inside, almost breaking the door in his haste, and gathered us all into the master bedroom, which was the only door that could lock besides the main and back doors. And soon enough, the police arrived, but when we told them what happened, they didn't believe us. They just said we were imagining things. But we knew deep down that it wasn't just our imagination. How could four of us, including an adult, all see the same thing? <laughs>